This is a review of the Frame Ranger add-on, which you can buy on the Blender Market. Frame Ranger is a tool that helps you manage actions, frame ranges, and markers on the animation timeline in Blender. Some of my favorite features are adding playback buttons to all animation editors, changing the frame range automatically to the length of the active action. There is also an action manager that interactively assigns animations and changes the frame range accordingly. And there is more. If you watch the rest of the video, I'll show you some of the cool features. By the way, there is a free light version of the add-on that you can try, and I'm going to share a link to it in the video notes. The add-on is developed by my friend Blenderboy, who is also behind CG Dive's Game Rig Tools add-ons. His add-ons are always very robust and user-friendly, and the Frame Ranger is no exception. Some notes, I'll be reviewing the newest version of the add-on, which works with Blender 3.1 and later. And also full disclosure, I'm affiliated with this add-on. If you buy the add-on through my link in the video notes, I'll be making a small profit. So you can buy the add-on on the Blender Market, again, link in the description, uh, and once you purchase it, you'll be able to view your order and download the add-on. I'll download the latest beta version, but by the time the video is out, the add-on will probably be out of beta. So just download the add-on as a zip file. Then in Blender, you can install it like any other add-on. Go to Edit, Preferences, Add-ons, click Install, Go to the folder where you downloaded the add-on and just double click it. And finally, you need to place a check mark next to the add-on's name and that's it. At any point, if you need to find the add-on again in the add-on list, you just need to search for Frame Ranger and it's going to pop up. If I click on this triangle here, that will expand some add-on options. So let's take a quick look. Most of the features of the add-on are located here in the end panel on the Frame Ranger and Action Manager. The add-on allows you to change the tabs. This area always gets cluttered. So if I change the category for each of these panels uh, to something shorter, like FR, for example, I'm going to copy this and keep pasting it into the other categories. Now all of the add-on features are here in the FR uh, tab and the label will change the name of the panel. If I just change the name like here, you'll see it reflected here. I don't find that as useful. So I'm going to revert to default. And to avoid confusing you, I'm going to reset the tab names to default. The easy way to reset an add-on to its default state is to simply disable it and then enable it back again. And now everything will be back to default. And let's move to the general settings. Here, I'm going to skip the extras. These settings won't be very useful to most people. The import menu settings will add some import entries to the file import menu. So if you look under file import, at the bottom, you'll see frame range and timeline makers. And these are files that you can export from frame ranger and here you can import them. And now let's move to the timeline utilities. And this is where things get interesting. So now I'm going to disable the add-on again, just to show you uh, what we have by default. In the default Blender interface, I have the timeline and it has some playback options. I can play the action and I can set the frame range. If I go to another animation editor, like the dope sheet, for example, there are no playback buttons. Graph editor, no buttons. NLA, no buttons. And this always bothered me because these are animation editors. You may want to play the animation or change the animation range. And so you always had to kind of split the interface and add another timeline. Well, if I enable Frame Ranger again, you'll see that playback buttons have been added to my NLA editor here. If I switch to the, um, if I switch to the, the dope sheet, Again, I have uh, playback buttons and frame range buttons. And in the graph editor, same thing, I have playback buttons. So again, if I go to the preferences and look under general, the animation player setting adds these uh, playback buttons. And you can remove them, but personally, I love this so much. I think it should be default, so I'm definitely going to leave it like this. And frame range uh, will add or remove the frame range settings here. And auto frame range is a special setting from the add-on itself. So I'm going to leave it to default. And in a second, I'm going to show you how this works. And we also have a key maps settings. 
So if you click on it, you'll see that there is a shortcut Shift F that is assigned to a couple of operators. This basically gives you a pie menu when you're in one of the animation editors. So I need to be in the animation editor and press Shift F and here is a little menu that I'm going to explore in a second. So the default shortcut is Shift F. If you need to change it, you can easily do it here. So now let's talk about automatic frame ranges, which is one of my favorite features of this add-on. And again, I'm going to disable the add-on for a second to show you the default behavior in Blender. Now, if I change this window to a dope sheet action editor and I apply one of the animations that I have for this character, you'll see that um, the animation was applied, I can play it, and here the animation is almost exactly as long as my timeline, but if I switch to another one, you'll see that it is much, much longer, but my frame range is left to its default state. Okay, here I have um, a much shorter animation. Again, the frame range is unchanged. If I enable the add-on now and make sure that the automatic frame range is enabled. Actually, by disabling and enabling it again, I activated the feature. So now my frame range was set exactly to the length of this animation. Now, if I play the animation, I'll be playing exactly the full action that I have uh, activated. If I now switch to another action, you'll see that Frame Ranger automatically set the range to be exactly as long as the action. And now I can play it. Let's do this again. And again, and again, and each time the add-on will change the frame range to the length of the animation. And there is more. If I tweak this animation, if I scale it, for example, you'll see that as I'm scaling the animation, the frame range is automatically being adjusted. I'm going to undo. I can also just uh, pick one of the keyframes that I have here and move it. And as soon as I let go, the frame range will be adjusted. I'm going to undo again. And this also works in the NLA editor. I'm going to create an NLA editor and push down this animation and some of the other animations. Okay, now if I look at the settings for the automatic frame range, it is set to action, which means that it will set the frame range to the length of the active animation. We can switch it to NLA mode and the only selected setting is enabled. If I now select one of these strips and move it, you'll see that the frame range was adjusted to that animation. Okay, it works for each strip. Um, if I disable only selected, then it will take into account all tracks and all strips in the NLA. So for example, right now the frame range is as long as the longest animation, but if I push this other action, beyond the longest section, it will be adjusted to the full length of all strips in the NLA. Let's take a quick look at the pie menu that I mentioned earlier. I need to be in one of the animation editors, and if I press Shift F, there's this pie menu. The auto frame range button will basically enable or disable auto frame range, so it's the same as clicking this button. Set frame range will set the end of your frame range. Interactively, you just need to move the mouse. And the other features uh, make more sense in the action editor. So let's delete these tracks. And here I'm going to set um, some animation and I'm going to switch the automatic frame range to action so that it respects the length of my active animation. So now with Shift F, there is bake keyframes and randomized keyframes, which I haven't used yet. There is a time scale keyframe, which will change the speed of your animation. And trim keyframe will again interactively trim the animation. Uh, you have to be careful because that is destructive. So I'm going to undo. So let's see what we can do with the action manager. So in the action manager, I can add a list of animations that I'm working with, and I can easily set these animations and also automatically set their frame range. So I'm going to click on action bin here and load all actions. And here is a list of all of the animations. And all I need to do is click on one of these animations and it will be 
set as the active animation and the frame range will be set to the length of the action. For each action that you select, you can tweak some rather advanced settings, which I don't find myself using as much, but it is nice to have all of these options. Here you can also customize your action list and there are a bunch of features that you can enable. One that I like is a play button. So I'll have a play button and I just need to press it and the action will start playing. Very nice for previewing animations and it really gives this add-on a polished feel. And I should say that this list of animations is based on the object that I have selected. Here I have the armature selected. If I select one of the other objects, there are no actions in the list. And if that object had some animations, I could add them here. But in my scene, I only have actions on my armature. Now let's look at the frame ranger features. First, we have a frame range manager. And to start using it, I need to add a new frame range set, call it whatever I like. And now I can start creating frame ranges. For example, let's say that the first one is from zero to 50. And the second one from 75 to 154. And the third one, let's say that it is the full length of my action. Okay, so now if I click on any of these ranges, the actual frame range in Blender in the timeline will be adjusted. And this can be useful, for example, when you're working on a longer animation and you want to focus on a specific part of the animation. Let's say that a character is running and then jumping. So you could name your ranges run and then jump. And you'll be able to quickly switch between the different segments. And this list of ranges is stored in a set. So here I have the first range set. I can create another one, call it whatever I like. And now I can create a new list of ranges. So now let's look at the marker manager. So in Blender, if you go to the timeline and press M, you can create a so-called marker. You can also go to marker and add a marker. So the marker manager will allow you to more easily manage a list of markers. I'm going to press the plus sign to create a new marker. I can name it and decide on which frame it will be set. Press OK. Here's a new marker. And at any point I can tweak the frame on which it appears and I can add more markers. Personally, I don't animate all the time and I don't use markers as much. But one of the things that you can do with markers is to make Blender automatically change the active camera. So here I'm going to create two cameras. And let's say that I want this camera to be active at the first marker and then at the second one, I want it to change to the second camera. So I'm going to select my first marker, click set camera, and I want to choose camera 001, press OK. And then on the second marker, again, I'm going to set camera and choose the first camera. And now if I play the animation, you'll see that this camera is active. And then as I move past this keyframe, the other camera becomes active. I can also show you what that looks uh, from the camera view itself. Boom, and we change the camera. And of course, this is possible to do in Blender without the add-on. But honestly, if I had to do it, I'd have to Google it and maybe watch a tutorial. Whereas with this add-on, I can set it up intuitively in a couple of seconds. So that's it for this review. This is a big add-on and I showed some of the main features, but there is more. And I'm sure that you'll be able to discover your own favorite features and create your own workflows. If you want to give Frame Ranger a try, check out the links that I'm going to share. Again, there is a free light version that you can try and a full version that is available on the Blender market. You may want to subscribe to CG Dive because I'll be uploading more add-on reviews, rigging tutorials and stuff like that. I usually upload a new video every Thursday, so talk to you soon.